few years ago, a couple of the guys at the club that I was at out in Colorado started trying to fly these profile airplanes that they were building for combat. Now, they flew pretty well, and I thought, well, I'll build one, but I never got around to it for a long time. A couple years later, I decided that uh, I needed to start somewhere. I didn't know exactly how to how to get started. I hadn't built any of these foam airplanes before. So I picked up a um, lightweight indoor foamy airplane, uh, like you see here. And I used the moments off of it, the width of the tail and the length of the fuselage, cut it out of Dollar Tree foam board. Now that ended up being uh, worked pretty good. Uh, the only problem being was that um, it had a pretty complicated cut that the top and the bottom went together and I decided to make it a little easier so I just uh, put it together in a scissors cut. In other words I just cut it set down the center like that and assembled it and it just by sliding the pieces together. Now you can see it just slides together. Now the difficulty here is that of course you have to have it straight. It's, it's going to want to wander a little bit so you have to hit mark real well. But that was you know basically how I did it. Now the uh, uh, moments are pretty much the same here but I found that I could kind of make it in any shape I want it. So in other words, as long as they kept the tail relatively the same, the length of the airplane basically the same, placed the components in the same place, had the wing a certain distance back from the nose of the airplane, that I could cut these in different shapes. In this, in this case, I got it very similar to a zero, a Japanese zero, with the idea that uh, uh, it's a warbird. Now, I did it, um, actually I started with a old uh, Ronald Reagan um, video he made on uh, identifying airplanes uh, kind of neat and I uh, decided I'd go ahead and, and uh, try to cut out a zero and found out there was a lot of you know kind of hard to do when you just have pictures but I went ahead and I lined it out you see I taped a uh, foam board first with just clear tape the only red zero I had was kind of a maroon zero so I put that on there, but you can see I've got the line outlines cut, and I use the same moments, the same dimensions that uh, I used on that first airplane. Now I've built probably maybe three, four different versions now. Sometimes I make all straight cuts. I don't have any rounded surfaces at all. Everything's straight. That way I can use the um, rollover method that uh, Ed on Experimental Airlines uh, uses. He um, uh, Got, actually got me started building any foam airplanes. Uh, I started with a noob tube and I can highly recommend that as the first airplane that flies very well and you know something that uh, you can use as a basis for all kind of different designs also. Now I have a little problem there we go. Now I cut it out and you can see I've got the slot so I can slot it together Okay, now you have to make sure that you continue that line straight down so that it, uh, uh, you don't get a warp in your airplane and causes it uh, to act like it control surfaces if it isn't straight. But, uh, you know, and then I'll have to cut the hinge in my tail. Now on this particular airplane, the tail uh, was totally, uh, the elevator was ahead of the uh, rudder. So the uh, uh, elevator will have to be... Uh, even with the back of this uh, section right here. And there I've got it assembled. Set it up with a two inch nose. Now here I'm starting on the wing. Now I'm going to put an arrow shaft in across here. Okay. And it's going to be two and a half inches back from the leading edge. Uh, basically I use the same uh, dimensions as the uh, uh, the first foamy that I had purchased and just kind of copied that out. I'm going to have really big ailerons on this for a, a zero but uh, it should work okay. You can see I've already cut out the hinge for the ailerons. Of 
Now, one of the things that I did before I went too far with this, and I still had the pieces disassembled, I take and I put hot glue on the edges. I take a split piece of foam, about 3 sixteenths of an inch cut in there, and I just run it along and I smooth that foam out, and that allows the foam to actually roll over the edges. That keeps makes the uh, paper much more stable. Typically, if you use a um, tape or you cover it with just about any kind of covering that doesn't roll over the edge, it'll begin to peel. The paper will get uh, water and, and moisture will begin to peel or work its way underneath the tape, underneath the uh, paper, and it'll begin to delaminate it. Now, if you use the um, uh, flight test uh, version of uh, using a oil-based um, polyurethane, it will uh, still become very brittle at the edges. Now, if you actually finish this off the edges with uh, hot glue, you'll find that uh, you'll get a lot more durability out of your model. Alright, there's assembled with the, not assembled yet, it just got it laid out with the wings. And it, you know, looks like it's coming together. Now here's where I put the arrow shaft in. I actually cut a, um, I don't go all the way through, I go through the foam and the top layer of paper. Um, this is still the zero. After I got along so far, I realized that that small dot wasn't going to be enough to identify top and bottom of the airplane when I'd get a distance away, so I decided that I would go ahead and, and uh, put some color on the bottom. Still looks like a zero from the top, but from the bottom, not so much. Um, you know, but you can see I've got the uh, arrow shaft in there, and I go ahead and I fasten one side in right away. Uh, it's hot glued in. Uh, in this case, I don't even bother to cover it with tape or anything. It, uh, when you try to cover that round surface with uh, some tape, it gets all kind of wrinkled, so I figured it'd just look better. Leave it alone. I could always paint it white if I want to change it. Now, you also can see that I had, you could actually get the sizes from laying on that board. The leading edge of the wing will be five and a half inches back from the nose. Okay, and the arrow shaft was uh, uh, eight inches back. Okay, so there's the mark there, and then eight, uh, two and a half inches more. And I drill a hole through for the arrow shaft. Now, drilling a hole through, I kind of got my own way of doing that. And if you look, this is a part of one of those um, outdoor light fixtures. Um, the solar powered light fixtures. This is a small one. It's about, uh, oh, I guess it's about three eighths of an inch or maybe a little more. And I take my Dremel tool and I just serrate the edges of it, clamp it into a drill, and then it becomes a hole saw. Makes a nice little round hole in foam board. I kind of like that. And we're waiting. There we go. Now, you see I've got it set up here. Now I'll glue underneath between these surfaces here. I'll glue here um, and then uh, have that all set in there. Then this, for the second part I'll take the other half of the wing that isn't that what doesn't have the arrow shaft glued in yet. I'll apply the glue to the uh, slot with the arrow shaft in and then quickly glue underneath the wing here. Slide it all together and hold it as straight as I can. Uh, it tends to want to hold pretty straight and make sure that the arrow shaft is well seated in the slot. Okay, for the tail, now I took and I ran a barbecue stick uh, through the tail surfaces. Then I backed it back out to where I could uh, uh, assemble the airplane. And then push the barbecue stick up to where it would put it was scratching a mark on the uh, vertical surface. Then I cut out the vertical surface to allow the uh, shaft, to, the uh, barbecue stick, to go through. And then I glued the uh, ran some glue on the barbecue stick and quickly ran it through the the two surfaces to make them together. Now that's just one way of doing it. Um, you could have made this whole a keyway and put a uh, bar, a uh, 
popsicle stick through there too. I just thought this is just something I was thinking about trying and I did it and I, again I used that little hole saw I built to cut the hole. When you do that you have to kind of make the uh, barbecue or the uh, slot to wherever the barbecue stick en ends up at because they usually don't go through the end of the foam straight when you drill them in. Okay here's the motor mount that's two inches. You can see I've got marked here and here. I placed it up against the model and so I know about where the uh, uh, mountings are going to be and then I drilled two one sixteenth or four one sixteenth inch uh, holes in the motor uh, in the wood to uh, mount the base plate for the motor on to the motor mount. Okay, now here's the motor mount. I have to mark the top because typically these aren't going to be evenly spaced. You kind of set it up against the uh, uh, model and you mark where the holes are going to be. Take some barbecue sticks, I sharpen the points on them. You can do that with a pencil sharpener. I use a, a, a stick them in a drill and push them up against a belt sander. But you see I've got them, the holes drilled the same size. I just uh, stuck my barbecue sticks in the drill holder and figured out what size drill was going to take to fit. Now when I mount this I'm going to epoxy all the sticks as they go in and I'll put a little epoxy here so I end up with some epoxy to the wood. Now the also the, the base plate here will be epoxy to the leading edge of the foam and I'll add some a little bit of support to that too. Alright, you can see I've got it set up in order to go here. I'm going to epoxy here, up and down the two vertical surfaces. Now, after I took the, the um, as you just saw in the previous video or picture there, I had it pushed up against there. Well, that was pers only to mark where the holes were going to end up at. Then I go ahead and I drill the holes all the way back, oh, probably roughly two inches in there so that I can push the, easily push the, uh, uh, bar the barbecue sticks in there when I go to assemble and glue it down. Otherwise you're battling and trying to get them up in there. Okay, I got to, this is, just gets set it all up to where I see everything's going to work all right. And then I went ahead and glued it. Like I said, this is going to be the plate is glued to the foam. And, to, and the sticks are, are epoxy and I use five minute epoxy for all this and I've had very good luck with it I don't believe I've had a failure yet I've already uh, broke the metal part but I don't break and here it is you can see a little bit of epoxy on the sticks here it's been finished off and I always put a little pieces of foam be nice if that was white foam, but uh, blue is what I had. And it's a little optical illusion that motor is actually on there straight. I think it's because this uh, it didn't go on. Now, one of the big reasons I do put the foam in there, it does add more strength to the joint here. But it also protects, and I use sheet metal screws, and they come in about that far. And, and when I mount my battery and, and such, anything that slams forward won't hit the end of the... Um, sheet metal screw and punch your hole in the battery. That's actually happened to me. So I always make sure I uh, protect the end of the battery. Okay. And there it's assembled with the tail on there. Got these pictures a little bit out of order. But you can see I put a very large tail surface on there. It's kind of fun. You can throw it around the sky a little bit with that. But it's a, uh, I believe on this picture here, it's all assembled. You notice that uh, all my edges are glue sealed. Uh, now on this particular model, I've got too much glue in the hinge. Now flight test, uh, I believe it was uh, Chad on flight test uh, introduced a method of smearing glue into the hinge in order to strengthen it. It works very well. I use it quite a bit. Now, when I do smear the glue on the edges, I make a lot of these because you, um, you have to use a new one almost every time. 
and basically here it is set up. I got the tail on there. Everything's set up there. Now here I'm mounting the uh, uh, landing gear to it. Now I make the landing gear with the box in instead of VN like flex like flight test does. I make a square in, and it's wire tied to the aero shaft on on the back side and on the front side. I use a, a piece of barbecue stick through here, and I wire tie it down tight, and then I put a little dot of um, uh, hot glue onto the stick so the stick doesn't work its way out either way. Now that will be pulled down tight against there. Okay, at the bottom view here, got the landing gear. You can see it's box N instead of V. A V would work, but it'd be really hard to get it uh, tied down right here at the center. Um, originally, this uh, particular design was made with uh, one servo uh, mounted right about here, and with the wires going out to the uh, uh, with a double with a double arm on the servo, and the arms going out. And kind of it works with a nine gram, but I'll be honest about it. Even with uh, I used five gram uh, spectrum servos. And they didn't have enough strength to overpower the glue uh, joint that uh, uh, I ended up with on my uh, aileron. So I ended up taking the not, the 5 gram off and putting 9 gram servos on the uh, wing. You see I've got passages through for my battery. This is my battery going to mount down here on the uh, uh, starboard side of the airplane. Uh, on the bottom side. You could put it bottom or top, whatever you like. But maybe bottom might be a better idea. The only one of the problems I have is I didn't have a short uh, Y connector, so I've got a lot of extra wire here. Okay, here's a little bit. I've got the speed controller here going to the motor, coming through. I've got the motor mount. I've got a piece of uh, the hooked Velcro here. I use the uh, fuzzy side of the velcro on the battery so that when I lay the battery down somewhere it doesn't stick to everything. And I put a strap through because uh, if you've ever had an, a model where the battery comes loose um, it looks kind of funny spinning around in a circle up in the sky. You can see I've got my 9 gram servos out here mounted here and they go to uh, I'm used, I always use those quick, uh, quick links. I like those. And that wire is actually flag uh, wire from uh, those uh, uh, warning flags they put up over gas lines when they're doing constructions and stuff. Those are uh, Hobby King wheels and these here here because I use two millimeter wire music wire these are, have to be drilled out they come from Hobby King also but they're not quite the same and it's tough to drill those out. I, I, I don't recommend if you don't have the proper tools to try to do it. Um, you can always go down to the local hobby shop and get uh, keepers that will uh, wheel stop wheel keepers that uh, will fit the wire just a lot more expensive okay and there's the uh, now right here you can see I got a problem right here now I've flown this airplane already and I noticed that uh, the trim was changing as I flew it and the reason the trim was changing is because the uh, servo was mounting I got it on servo tape and it was mounting so uh, just after I actually made this video I realized I could see the servo had moved so I took and I pushed it back into position then I hot glued it down real well okay leaves a little lemon receiver I've probably got six or seven of those now and to be honest about it works pretty good I use a wire tie for my landing skid or for my tail skid works really well. That's a super way of doing it. There I've got my hook and loop um, uh, battery mount. And here I've got this laid out again. You can see that if you do a count out you'll find out that's 28 inches. And then from the hinge of the tail, this isn't the full uh, tail feathers, it's from the hinge out. You can see how long it is. And it looks like it's about what one, two, three, four wide and 28 long and yeah it gets you an idea because what I find is you don't have to be real critical about the sizes you can kind of cut this in any shape you want 
I've already I've already cut them where there'd be a straight line up here and a straight line down here and a straight line up there because I used the rolled method that uh, uh, Ed on Experimental Airlines used so I made all my cuts straight and uh, then I ended up being able to uh, roll the edges over um, if you watch his uh, videos on uh, assembling airplanes you'll see, you'll see his technique okay and there's the, there's the wing and this is basically the size of the wing you can count the, the little blocks here and get a get a pretty good idea you know like it from the leading edge of the wing here it drops down one and a half and then the tip of the wing appears to be one half one two three four five so five and a half inches across the, the tip there and shame that the numbers don't run consecutively along the bottom but the, that's just math just doesn't work out that way for me okay that was it and we'll call it even.